don't like your ideology. I don't know about oh, you. You seem like a nice enough person. Yeah. Your ideas are practically evil, but that's oh, no, same for you. Okay. <laughs> you don't really want to right now. Then why are you calling him out in public? Dude, but yet you choose to live in a free market society and benefit from it and use the heat and the light and the well-being and the medicine and the food, all the byproduct of a market-based society. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it. But... Oh, you love it. But you said it's what? a vampire sucking the blood of the working class. So you started the video on Valley by not even defending your claims and then the way you live your life also goes against what you claim to believe yeah but I, I i don't like your ideology i don't know about oh, you you seem like a nice enough person yeah your ideas are practically evil but that's oh, okay. well, same for you. <laughs> okay tell me why what tell me why capitalism is a vampire i don't know so don't... what I said that capitalism is a deadly vampire that feeds on the blood of the working class. So. Capitalism is a deadly vampire that feasts on the blood of the working class. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that for me? Um, I don't really want to right now, but like... What? Because like... Do you, do you, you don't really want to right now, then why are you calling him out in public? What? Okay. Okay, let's continue, let's continue. Do you have an iPhone? I was, yeah. So you're you're feasting on the blood of the working class, how dare you? Yeah, I know. How do you feel about that? We um, all do the best that we can. Uh, no, you don't. Why, why don't you go live on a farm and not use the fruits of the working class and just be a socialist with your friends? Why, why use the fruits of the free market? Isn't that kind of hypocritical? No, because the free market is so pervasive, we have like no choice but to leave. No, like I said, you could go live on a farm by yourself, like the Amish do, or like socialists in Vermont do, but yet you choose to live in a free market society and benefit from it, and use the heat and the light, and the well-being and the medicine and the food all as a byproduct of a market-based society. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it, but... Oh, you love it, but you said it's what? a vampire sucking the blood of the working class, so isn't that a little contradictory? What? What's your dad's opinion? My dad's opinion? Yeah, how old are you? I'm 18. Uh, what, what's your, is your dad the same situation as you? No. no I, I he's, he's a Republican. Slightly, that's okay then. So, let me get this right. Your father who raised you, well, I don't know if he raised you, I'm just assuming. He raised you, is a Republican. He d disagrees completely with what you're saying. You are also showing cognitive dissonance by using everything you claim to be evil by having a phone. Looks like a pretty nice hoodie, book bag. You're in. It looks like you're in school right now. You have a freshly shaven haircut. You look pretty clean. I'm not gonna lie. You look clean. It looks like you. You are like capitalism's golden child. <laughs> if I'm being honest, you have all this stuff, but you hate it and you support socialism. And I'm not trying to attack his ideologies or him as an individual. What I'm attacking is his hypocrisy. If you are going to really say socialism is better or capitalism is bad, you started the video off badly by not even defending your claims. And then the way you live your life also goes against what you claim to believe. He's he's Republican. Yeah, he's a Republican. Do, do, no one's preventing. See, here's the thing. No one's preventing you from living like a socialist. You can go do that, but your 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 worldview would prevent me from living like an entrepreneur or like a capitalist. So inherently, your ideology is built on control of other people's choices. Ours is built on freedom. If you want to go live like a socialist, I have no problem with that. You can go start your own socialist colony in rural Utah, buy your own land, and share your own water and share your own food. That's what's so amazing about voluntary societies. Whereas what you talk about is a coercive society. I don't have that freedom to live how I want to live under the worldview that you espouse. And I think that's immoral. You're forcing them. And again, I don't believe in revolutionary socialism. I, I didn't that. accuse you of that. You okay. said, you said Democrat believe, socialism. Yeah. Um, that's just the club that I'm with. Really, I'm, I'm fairly Marxist, honestly. Okay, like, we can, let's talk. That's just, that's just the club that I'm in. But, I believe that eventually we will get to a state where enough people, we will collectively come together and say, hey, you know, this is better, you know, for all of us. I don't, I don't, obviously, with the world we live in today, like, socialism can't exist, like, like today in America. Like, I'm, I'm very pragmatic, you know, at, at my core. I'm like, I recognize that that's so, never going to so happen. So, you said the Marxist thing. Can you give me an example where Marxism has ever worked? Um... <laughs> I remember I did a video in the past and somebody said they were a Marxist and I tried to define Marxism and I couldn't find a definition. Let's try again. I'm going to use ChatGPT this time rather than 
Define Marxist. My screen froze. <laughs> My screen froze. It froze. Every time I try to define this word, I can never define it. It's the craziest thing ever. My screen froze this time. The last time I looked it up, it said a Marxist is someone who believes in Marxism. I still don't know what the definition is. <laughs> Let's continue. Now, but that's because we need part of But it's been tried over a hundred times in the last hundred years. And it's never worked. It's an O for a hundred. And isn't that kind of concerning to you? Well, so the thing is, in a, in, in a Marxist state, you know, it's a, um, it's a state for this class, this money, this society. Yeah. Right, and so that, that's just utopia, man. I mean, that, that's no different than a fiction novel about Neverland. It's, it's been tried, and the results are hundreds of millions of people dead. But, but, that's, but that's ultimately what the true concept is, utopia. Okay, the definition loaded. It's a classless society where the means of production are owned communally. So everyone owns everything. That sounds like it could cause a lot of problems because what if some people don't want to give resources to another group of people? Hmm, I wonder if that has ever happened before. <laughs> I'm just playing. But let's continue. Right, so so here's the question. You think utopia is attainable? I think it is. Not in our lifetime. Okay. Have you read the couple of manifesto? Yeah, and so I, I, I guess the struggle I have here is you espouse a viewpoint that has never worked, you think it's never going to work in our lifetime, and never work in this country. That, that's no different than me believing in something of a work of fiction. But well, that doesn't mean that you can't work in the So how would we go about working towards it? That's where the revolutionary component comes in, isn't it? So maybe you are a little more revolutionary than you admit it. I don't think I am. I think that like when you look over time and you see, you know, how societies have changed and how they've progressed and everything, I think that eventually we will get to what I mean. The people are getting to pretty solid. Well, so let me ask you a question. question. Do you think some people are better at some things than others? Sure. Okay, so then in your utopian society, where would a smarter person fit in versus a not so smart person? Would there be hierarchies or no in your fictitious utopian Marxist My society? Fictitious, okay, you know, we merge society. Well, at that point, automation will have taken over enough so that the amount of automation to what is today. But who's designing this automation? Somebody has to create the automation that you claim will be taking over. So let me get this straight. An engineer, I guess, or an electrician, I guess they're working it in t together. They have to go to school. They have to bust their tail to create some type of automation that will create a utopian society. And after they create this, someone's going to come to them and tell them, hey, <laughs> all that hard work you put in, you won't really get all the labors because we own it now. We are a classless society. So, yes, you still have to work 60 hours a week to make sure this automation runs perfectly, but... Johnny over there who does nothing will still get the same exact privileges and resources as you. This will literally never work in any lifetime. I don't see this ever working ever in society, but maybe I'm wrong. I just don't think it's fair, though, to the people who actually do work hard in society versus the people who don't, because a lot of people really don't work that hard. Are you familiar with this thinking? No, I'm very familiar. I, I'm the, trying the to deconstruct. Is that to, to no, trust, trust me, I'm not, I'm not asking okay. to figure it out. I'm actually to deconstruct. I, I don't actually think he believes this. I'm saying that, that uh, because of the modern age, there is a new variable, right, which is automation. Yeah. So they're familiar with it. But that, that, that will never get rid of higher for, so. for, for the 2020 election, there's, uh, what's his name, there's a candidate who believes in the... Uh, yeah, the Asian-American guy. Yes. Very nice guy. You or something. But here's the thing. That, that are, if we Karl Marx argued that in the 1870s, and we've had huge automation, and we still have higher like So no matter how hard you try, some people are going to work harder at certain things and be more proficient at them than others, whether it be music, sports, anything. In the fictitious Marxist society, you, it means the complete and total abolition of any sort of hierarchy whatsoever. And so that's something you would believe in. Okay, so that's anti how we're actually built as people. Some people are taller, some people are smarter, some people have higher IQs, some people have more drive. Only in a market-based society are those differences able to elevate the standard of living for all people and actually make some sense of a broken world. And there's been so many times that 
Marx's fictitious utopian con communism has tried to be implemented. Over a short period of time, like the Paris Commune, it falls apart. Do you know why? Because human beings are inherently selfish. And so if you try to build a commune, for example, after 20 days, you're going to have one guy and say, no, 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 I want two loaves of bread, not one. And he might be smart enough to be able to figure out how to do that. Then all of a sudden there'll be a small subdivision that will break away from him and you have the conflict. The only reason we have a civil society in the West is in order to get two loaves of bread in the West, you have to earn it. You can't take it away from somebody else. That's where Marx is with the fictitious communism brings him. Well, yeah. Um, actually... That is a really young kid. He looks, what, 18, probably in his early stages of college, maybe. So I do commend him on, you know, posing or presenting his views to someone that he may know will shoot them down. I commend him on that. The views itself were a little sketchy, but he's young. He's learning. But if you have any suggestions for me, comment down below. It's LFR. Yeah, 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 yeah.